You're listening to the Hour of the Time. I'm William Cooper. I have no idea what's happening, folks. This is the second time this week that we've had uh, an awful hard time getting up on the satellite. Uh, we had to try three times tonight to uplink. And uh, I know we're on WWCR now, so I know we're also on satellite. Uh, whatever the problem is, we'll try to figure it out and get it solved. And uh, I apologize to those of you who are sitting breathlessly by your radio waiting for us to come on the air, and we didn't. Everything's fine. The uh, Constitution Party meeting in New Hampshire, New Hampshire, will take place on April the 25th. That's the Constitution Party meeting in New Hampshire, will take place on April 25th. For information... Contact Tony at 603-595-7919. That's Tony at 603-595-7919. Or Chris at 603-626-0342. That's Chris at 603-626-0342. Um, let me see here. Also, there'll be a Constitution Party meeting in Missouri, Thursday, April 20th at 7 p.m. That's Thursday, April 20th at 7 p.m. in the state of Missouri at Kearney Branch of the Springfield Green County Public Library in the Public Use Room. That's at 630 West Kearney in Springfield, Missouri. Contact Tom at 417-889-5988. That's Tom at 417-889-5988. There will also be a meeting of the Constitution Party of South Carolina. That's the Constitution Party of South Carolina. And at all of these meetings, folks, if you're in another state but you're near and you want to go to these meetings, feel free. We welcome anybody. Constitution Party of South Carolina will meet on April the 20th at 7 p.m. That's April the 20th at 7 p.m. at the Greenville Public Library at 300 College Street in Greenville, South Carolina. Uh, for information, call Mark at 803-834-0992. That's Mark at 803 eight three four zero nine nine two or you can call Vic at eight zero three six eight four three one five five. That's Vic at eight zero three six eight four three one five five. Okay, let me give you a reminder. April the eighteenth. That's Tuesday, folks. I believe it's Tuesday. Yes it is, Tuesday. April the 18th, 1995, in the Pennsylvania State Capitol at Harrisburg, meet in the Rotunda at 12 noon. April 18th, 1995. You've got to take a vacation. You've got to do this, folks. You must be there. April the 18th at 12 noon in the Rotunda of the State Capitol in Harrisburg at 12 noon. The theme is support the United States Constitution untampered, unchanged. Deliver the message. Help us stop the conference of states, folks. If we can stop it in Pennsylvania, we can stop it everywhere. Pennsylvania is symbolic. 
It is the place where our forefathers did the same thing to the Articles of Confederation that these people want to do to the Constitution. They want to create a parliamentary form of government under the United Nations. And if we don't stop them, they will. And they want this conference of states to be held in Philadelphia for the symbolism, for the symbolism. They will call it Philadelphia II. Take the day off. Take a vacation. Take three days off. Take the family. Participate, folks. This is going to be a historic event. And who knows? Your name might be in the history books. Participate. Remember, Thomas Jefferson said, the price of liberty is eternal vigilance and all of our founding fathers realizing how easy it was for them to convene a constitutional convention with a simple majority of seven out of the 13 original colonies and change the whole government. They knew it was so easy that they warned us never to allow another constitutional convention to take place. So be there. Be there with bells on your toes. Don't forget, we're having our conference here, May 29th through June the 2nd. May 29th through June the 2nd, and the craziness has already started. There are people who have subscribed to Veritas who now want to become a member of the Intelligence Service, and they want to know if they can have their Veritas money back because their subscription comes with the membership. And there are people who have already sent in $350 as a non-member. Now they want to know if they join the Intelligence Service, can they get a, a $250 refund on their conference fee? The answer is no. I'm not going to stand for this craziness. We've been here for years. You've all had an opportunity to join the Intelligence Service. And when CAGI membership was open a long time ago, you all had an opportunity to join CAGI. You still have an opportunity to enjoy to join the Intelligence Service. But we're not going to play these silly games. It's funny that so many of you want to join now that you think you can save some money in doing it. If you want socialism, go to Cuba. Castro will be happy to have some people to take the place of those who are fleeing. I said over and over again, no refunds, folks. I'm not going to play this game. If you want to join the intelligence service, you're welcome to do that. But if you've already sent in and reserved a seat, it's non-refundable. If you already have a Veritas subscription, if you join the intelligence service, you're going to have two subscriptions. It's the way it works. We do this to support our operations here. And if you're going to start this stuff, we won't have a conference because we'll too be too busy shuffling money around and playing silly games with the sheeple. And personally, I really don't care what you think about it. I'm not going to participate in that kind of game with you. So you better understand that right here and right now. I made it very clear. Very, very clear. There is no misunderstanding on the part of anyone. If you want to support us, support us. If you don't, turn off your radio and go play games with Tom Valentine. He likes to play games. The Constitution Party, ladies and gentlemen. Well, let me get back to the conference. May 29th through June the 2nd. If you have a single membership in either the Intelligence Service or if you're a CAGI member, and if you're a CAGI member, that's the only kind of membership you have, conference fee is $100. If you're in the Intelligence Service and you have a family membership, and uh, there will be two people attending, your fee is $150. If you have a family membership and three or more will be attending, the fee is $200. For your whole family. If you are a non-member, the fee is $350, non-negotiable. Remember, folks, once your fees are sent in and your place is reserved, the fee is non-refundable. Under any circumstances, I don't care what they are. I've made that very clear. So if you want to get mad at me, you go right ahead. won't do you any good. Because I haven't uh, misled anyone. I've told you the truth from the beginning. If you don't understand, then you've got no business listening to this broadcast because maybe it's a little too complicated for you. The Constitution Party, if you want to help us save this nation, if you're really concerned, 
if you understand that the Democrats and the Republicans and the Libertarians and the rest of them aren't going to do it for you, and neither is Perot with all his charts and his pointers and his blackboards, he's not going to do it for you either. The Constitution Party is where it's at, folks. And if you'd like to join, call 810-674-8094. Get with people who use their heads, who understand what liberty is all about, and who understand that that's our common bond. Without liberty, I don't care who you are. I don't care relig what religion you adhere to. I don't care what the color of your skin is. I don't care what your ancestry was. We have a common bond, and that's liberty. And the Constitution Party is the only party that recognizes that. We're also the only party that has come out vocally opposing the conference of the states. Why? Because the Democrats and the Republicans and the Libertarians... If you really get down, follow what they're doing, they're going to lead you into world government. And that's the truth. The libertarians don't believe in national borders. They don't believe in import or export duties or taxes. They believe that anybody should be able to come and go any place they want to, any time they want to. And a lot of other things. So call 810-674-8094. That's 810-674-8094. And uh, ask Karen to make you a member of the Constitution Party. It's important. And uh, you'll like it. We're active. Activate or abdicate. The future is in your hands. Don't go away. I'll be right back with some startling material. All of a sudden, in the middle of the night, there's a loud knock on your door. Hey, honey. Something's not right. Watch your hands. Step on past the room. We're here for the government. We're here to help you. And I'm from the IRS with a pride of tax. If you've got a complaint, <laughs> state of the tax. Get out of this house. Surrender your taxes. Give me your gold. You better obey if you want to come home. That's what you said. I'm the one you're told. Oh, you Hillary Salala, Reno Janet Dyke, reading the words of General Albert Pike, the money founder of the Ku Klux Klan, engineer of the Masonic Master Plan. Pike said, Lucifer is God across this land. And Clinton saying, take the mark in your right hand. While well, we're all dancing to the drums of up north right, Clinton's preparing it for another huge Order out of chaos, depression, inflation, create the panic and rape the nation. Order out of chaos. Crisis creation. That's right, folks. Ordo ab chaos. Crisis creation. All across this country, there are people misleading to you, lying to you. Agents provocateur attempting to create a revolution in this country to bring into being world government. That's right. And you've always heard me say here, there must be no revolution. Restoration, yes. Revolution, never. You don't understand the Hegelian dialectic, and it's obvious to me, So tonight I'm going to read something to you. I'm not going to tell you who wrote it. I'm just going to read it to you. Later in the broadcast I'll tell you who wrote it and where you can find a copy of it <clears throat> so that you can read it yourself. <clears throat> Excuse me. And here goes. It's called The Brotherhood of Man. 
We've all heard the expression, the brotherhood of man. The term can have many meanings, so I'll give you mine. It obviously refers to the fact of human equality insofar as our mental qualities are concerned. Also, it most likely refers to the task we humans have before us, the common task of advancing by accumulating knowledge until we are the relative equal of our Creator. For those of you who don't understand that philosophy, and this is an aside from the text, that is the Gnostic philosophy of the mysteries. The mystery schools, the Freemasons, the Rose and Cross, the Illuminata. And it continues. But let me back up and read that part once again so that you understand. Also, it most likely refers to the task we humans have before us, the common task of advancing by accumulating knowledge until we are the relative equal of our Creator. Do you recognize the man is God concept of the mystery schools? It continues, that seems to me to be a fair price to pay for the immortal gift of ego, mentality, and personality. Notice that spirit is not mentioned there at all. Neither is soul. And it continues, this common bond has led to the formation of a society of more advanced egos which consists of an equal number of male and female members at all times, calling themselves the Brotherhoods. Those citizens of ancient Lemuria who advanced rapidly toward human perfection by concentrating on developing their character and growing away from the physical toward the metaphysical with knowledge, soon noticed the plight of the rest who have not been advancing at such a pace. Recognize the superior race routine, ladies and gentlemen? And I continue. Because an advancing person develops the natural urges of love and compassion while controlling the animalistic urges of anger and fear, it stands to reason that such a person would desire to help his fellow man. He calls this in another text the race of shepherd kings. The superior race that will help lead the inferior races in their evolution. Hitler loved this stuff. And I continue. It doesn't very much from one esoteric group to another. Advancement comes in recognizable stages. Once an ego is firmly on the path, there is no doubt in that individual's mind that he is on the right track. I think this is what is meant by finding yourself, an expression heard often today but rarely understood. Actually, it is more like making yourself, because advancement isn't something you bump into by accident. It is something you must develop entirely on your own. And entirely on your own is emphasized. I continue. To me, it is ignorance of this simple truth that advancement is a reality and must be worked for which causes humankind the most pain as time passes by so relentlessly. The stages of advancement range from an initiate. Let me say that again so you'll understand. The stages of advancement range from an initiate, first degree, through a master, twelfth degree. Ladies and gentlemen, there is only one of the secret societies which has this system of degrees, and that is the Illuminati. Let me continue. An initiate is an individual who has a firm control over himself 
and his environment by virtue of his ability to practice the twelve great virtues regardless of the activities and attitudes of others around him. According to the legends, the citizens of Lemuria during its heyday all practiced these virtues very well. The virtues are simple but not so easy to ingrain into habit as we must do to advance. They include patience, Tolerance, forbearance, devotion, courage, sincerity, kindliness, discrimination, charity, efficiency, precision, and humility. Notice the absence of the traditional Christian values. I continue. You can imagine what a civilization the citizens of Lemuria evolved. When a person habitually practices these virtues and goes along in life unobtrusively, uplifting everyone around him, he finds that he becomes aware of more than just the physical nature of his surroundings. When he converses, he understands more than the mere words. His intuition informs him accurately of deeper meanings. He's talking about the symbology. And I continue. When he perceives, he sees more than the physical reality. He sees the vital and astral levels simultaneously. Translate, New Age. And I continue. And he can function on the astral level while remaining fully conscious within his physical vehicle. He is a controlled clairvoyant. Naturally, such a person has a balance between his positive and negative karma, meaning he has balanced out his bad deeds performed during less knowledgeable times with good deeds during more advanced times. This person is ready for the first degree. Can you imagine what twelfth degree must be like? It is said that a master is totally in control of the first four planes of existence and his vehicle is on the mental or fourth plane. He may choose to, but need not incarnate on the physical level. Masters have it made. All the human beings occupying this planet came into existence at the same time, somewhat more than a million years ago, Collectively, all of these persons are known as the human life wave. When the time for change of life waves comes along, everyone who has attained mastership will automatically move up a notch to the fifth plane, our angelic level in the terminology of my faith. Now, let me read that again so you'll understand. He's talking about his religion. When the time for change of life waves comes along, everyone who has attained mastership will automatically move up a notch to the fifth plane, our angelic level in the terminology of my faith. Now, he's talking about the fifth root race, which up until the coming millennium reigns. At that time, they are predicting a sixth or new sixth root race. And all those who cannot make the evolutionary shift or jump into that sixth root race will be left behind. Which, if you study all their writings, simply means they're just going to kill them. And that includes fundamentalist Christians, fundamentalists of the Islamic faith, and Orthodox Jews, and anyone else who will not kowtow to the new world religion. And I continue. Those who have not attained mastership remain discrete bundles of mental energy. But all memory of this life wave is wiped out and they will begin again in ignorance to reach mastership in another life wave, which means in another life. See, when they talk about their life wave memory being wiped out, they're talking about that person being simply killed. It's all through the new wave 
religion and the New Age teachings and the theosophy of Helena Blavatsky and in the secret depths of the lodges of Freemasonry and the Order of the Rose and Cross and all the rest of them. And they will begin again in ignorance to reach mastership in another life wave, which means another life, beginning again at the same or a lower level. And I continue. From this point of view, the atheist is partially correct. If memory is wiped away, when it's all said and done, then nothing has happened. It's all in how you look at it. The purpose of this explanation of my religious convictions, let me read that again so you'll understand that this person is revealing his religious convictions. He says, the purpose of this explanation of my religious convictions, and obviously these are not scientific facts that I can prove, is to give perspective to the thesis that such advanced individuals not only exist, but they are working hard to help us learn to help ourselves and have been doing so since they saw the handwriting on the wall in the days of Lemuria. Members of the Brotherhoods, people between the first and twelfth degree, working under the direction of the Archangel Melchizedek, whom we know as Christ, laid out a plan to help mankind evolve another civilization like that enjoyed by Lemurians at their pinnacle. I'm going to take a break now, folks, and when I come back, I'm going to back up and read that for you again, and then we're going to discuss this because you're being lied to all the time, and somebody's got to straighten you out. And unfortunately, I don't like the fact that it's me, but it is. And now I've got another problem here. I can't figure out what it is. Oh, there it is. Okay. Well, let me just back that up and do it again because I don't want you to miss one word of it because I love it. And we all know what it is, don't we? It's Paul's story and American pride. So don't go away. I'll be right back after this short pause. Pride. Real love American Folks, the hour of the time is brought to you by Swiss America Trading. They deal in real money. And I mean real money. This upcoming issue of Veritas is going to really open your eyes about money. And we have an upcoming broadcast that's going to, shall we say, illuminate you. <laughs> I love to play with these creeps who believe that they're the only truly mature minds. You see, nothing that is born of secrecy and is born of a lie can ever be anything but a lie. And anything that is built upon a lie is built upon a foundation of sand against a raging stormy surf and will surely be swept away. You need truth in your life. And one thing that is truth is real money. You see, the United States Code defines money as gold or silver coin. It's never been amended. It's never been rescinded. It's the law. The only money in this country under the law is gold and silver coin. It's the truth. A dollar is not money. A dollar is a unit of measurement of gold or silver coin. But you don't have any gold or silver coin. And they tell you the dollar is declining in value. How can a dollar define in, decline in value when it's a measurement, a unit of measurement of something that you're not dealing with? It can no more decline in value than a yard can decline by four inches. 
or a quart can decline by six ounces, or a mile can decline by a thousand feet. Are you beginning to get the message? According to the Constitution, Congress has the authority to coin money. It's the exact words. Coin money. It also says no state shall tender in payment of debt anything other than gold or silver coin. And people are catching on to this more and more and more. You're being lied to. The dollar is not devaluating. The dollar is not lowering its value in comparison to the yen or the German mark. They're just telling you that it is. The dollar is just a piece of paper, sheeple. Now, why don't you join me and become real people? And you can start by calling Swiss America Trading and get your hands on some real money at 1-800-289-289. 2646. That's 1 800 289. Four ounces. Or see if you can make a yard decrease in value by 12 inches. <laughs> please. And if you can do it, please call me up because. I want to go there. I'll go there instantly. I will get on an airplane. I will do anything. I will crawl on my hands and knees to see that feat of magic. 1-800-289-2646. That's 1-800-289-2646. And tell them that you're a regular listener to William Cooper on the hour of the time, and you'll get special treatment. I guarantee you. Just while living on a reservation Pride With our American pride We need American pride to Rebuild America So reach out your hand To help someone And learn to understand them For we as a nation Can make the fine Together rebuild again Right, we sure American right. We need American right to rebuild American right. Are you American right? Be an American right. Welcome back, folks, to the Hour of the Time. I'm William Cooper, for those of you who may just be turning in for the first time. Let me back up and uh, read what I was reading when we took our break. The purpose of this explanation of my religious convictions, and obviously these are not scientific facts that I can prove, and for those of you who may have just turned in, I'm reading from something written by someone else whom I will not reveal to you at this time. In fact, I may open the phones and see if any of you can guess who this is. So let me read this again. The purpose of this explanation of my religious convictions, and obviously these are not scientific facts that I can prove, is to give perspective to the thesis that such advanced individuals not only exist, but they are working hard to help us learn to help ourselves and have been doing so since they saw the handwriting on the wall in the days of Lemuria. Now listen carefully to this next sentence because it's going to tell you an awful lot. Members of the Brotherhoods, people between the first and twelfth degree, working under the direction of the archangel Melchizedek, whom we know as Christ, laid out a plan to help mankind evolve another civilization like that enjoyed by Lemurians at their pinnacle. The refinements and beauty of such a civilization are beyond the imagination of most of us today. 
Certainly, such a thing may be construed as heaven on earth. Translated, it's the old Masonic Golden Age. And it's all bullshit. These people believe that Jesus Christ was not the Son of God incarnate on earth. They believe that Jesus Christ was not God. They believe that he was just a great teacher and they equate him with Melchizedek, which they say is an archangel. They believe in the Blavatsky theosophical, or theosophical, I should say, religion, that there is a superior race known as Aryan who will guide the other races in their evolutionary development as their rulers, their shepherd kings. And that those who belong to this race, which this same author in another tome of his called the Hyksos, which, by the way, when you get into the Jewish mythology, the Hyksos are little demons. They look very similar to what is pictured on the cover of Whitley Strieber's book called Communion that everybody says are aliens. <laughs> but this guy and others like him believe in this race of shepherd kings. They practice magic. Yes, folks, magic. Magic is the art of illusion. It is the perfection of the art of deception. That's right. That's exactly what magic is. And it works, and it's terrible, and it's dangerous. And you are all under its spell right this moment. They have weaved such a web of lies that they now find themselves caught in it and cannot get out. And when you ask them if they are a Christian, they say yes. They will tell you that they are a Christian. They believe in Christ. And yes, they do. They believe that Christ is an ascended master. Not the Son of God. Not God incarnate in the flesh. He did not die, did not ascend unto heaven, and did not come back and talk to his disciples. Was not raised from the grave. But lived on. They believe that he actually entered into a sexual relationship or a marriage with Mary Magdalene and sired children, which was the beginning of the divine right of the rulership of kings in Europe, descended from this union. <laughs> oh, I've studied them so much, they hate me because I tear the lies away and I expose them to the real light. They're always talking about light, more light. We seek the light. We are the truly illumined. And they are liars. Everything that they say and do is a lie. They live in darkness, in secrecy. They conduct their meetings in temples without windows. They don't know what the light is until I open the curtain and shine a clear and bright beam of light into the corner where these cockroaches scurry away. Let's go to the phones now and see if anybody out there can guess who wrote this. And uh, if at the end of the program no one has guessed, I will tell you, and I will tell you the name of the book that I read it from so that you can go out and find it. Let's go to the phones right now. Good evening. You're on the air. Good evening. Would that be Al Gore? Nope, not Al Gore. Okay. Thank you for calling, though. Al Gore is not far away. He belongs to the same club, I can assure you. 602-337-2524. Good evening. You're on the air. Hi. Was it uh, Tom Valentine who wrote that? Absolutely. Right on the money. You are correct. How did you know? Uh, it sounds like him. Yes? Turn off your radio, please. Sure. I want to talk to you, and uh, when you first turn off your radio, I get tired of saying this, folks. When you call a radio show, please turn off your radio. Yeah, I know. Yeah, uh, Tom Valentine is into that kind of stuff. Yes, he claims that he doesn't know anything about any secret brotherhoods, 
that he was never a member, that he was never a Freemason, yet uh, in, uh, in uh, Project uh, 93, I believe it was, in Washington, D.C., uh, one of our people went up and uh, gave him the Masonic handshake, and he returned it uh -huh. and uh, smiled. And there were many witnesses to this, and we even had that person as a guest on this program. And uh, he was a member of the Stell Group. The Stell Group, yeah, I've read their book. He was also a member of the Communist Party. He was. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, stuff you read uh, just now also sounded a great deal like uh, Helena uh, Blavatsky. Yes, it's all the same. All of these secret societies believe in the same religion, and it's the same old religion that came out of Babylon thousands of years ago. Mm -hmm. It also sounds like Hitler. They are the great, yeah, exactly. Hitler and his SS uh, believed in this same religion. The SS actually had to go to a castle in Germany and be initiated into the uh, religion uh, of the masters of Germany and the, uh, the people who... Uh, who are bringing about the New World Order, which Hitler also talked about. Mm -hmm. um, Hitler was, was betrayed in order to uh, make the world sick of war so that they would accept the United Nations. They, they built him up. They rose him to power. They gave him the money. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. and then they chopped him down. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. You, you were right. You were absolutely 100% right. It's Tom Valentine, ladies and gentlemen. The book is called The Life and Death of Planet Earth by Tom Valentine. He is a highly degreed adept of the mystery schools. Good evening. You're on the air. Good evening there, William. How are you doing? Hey, I like the music you played earlier. Post office works a little better than it should. It goes to say that uh, I tried to reach you about a couple, 30 seconds before this other individual, and I had this very nice, bubbly-faced individual female who said, like, what number are you trying to reach? And it went round and round and round and round. I said what it was, and the number was your number. Oh, well, this and that, and so on and so forth. I really don't know who I was talking to at that particular time, but it sounds like got a little bit of interference there. Maybe you were talking to an operator. Uh, well, an operator, uh, probably in all likelihood, but an operator for who is a whole other program. But earlier in the evening, Valentine was dealing with uh, Flesh and Proud in Vietnam. I had a friend of mine was in uh, Naval Intelligence, and he tried to tell me, and I was not there. I will give you that. I was not there. He said that the main reason we were involved in Vietnam was oil, and he was an escort for uh, Aunt Margaret. No, it had nothing to do uh, with oil, actually. It had an awful lot to do with drugs, with the Central Intelligence Agencies dealing in drugs, yes. Hey, then I'll give you something you may or may not be aware of, and this is on a personal level because I was there. I don't know about the other thing because I wasn't there. Uh, Agent Orange, Agent Purple, uh, both manufactured by Union Carbide. Union Carbide subletted it out to an outfit called Central Chemical Corporation. It had two offices, one in Elkton, Maryland, one in Hagerstown, uh, both in Maryland, as a matter of fact. Now, this particular industrial installation was not too handy dealing with their safety procedures. You didn't have to wear respirator, blah, 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 you name it, we got it. However, when they were dealing with Agent Orange, they pulled blood in the morning when you went in, in the evening when you went out. Uh, it seems mighty peculiar when they were dealing with things like Omite, Seven, Malathion, Parathion, and whatever. Uh, they did not take these kind of procedures except for one particular instance, and that was when they were dealing with Agent Orange. Now, there was a person, a uh, Puerto Rican individual, and I think his name was Perez, but we're dealing with 20 years. Wait, wait, wait. What is your point? Nothing. I just want to divulge some information. Do you, do you have a point to make here? I don't know if that information got out or not. If what information got out or not? Dealing with Asian Orange and Asian Purple. Oh, yeah, I, I think that's pretty pretty much uh, known information, at least with everybody who's studied all of these things. Uh, this, uh, the only thing I wanted to say, and I can finish it, you can cut me off, whatever. I don't have any problem with that because I deal in retail. In any case... <laughs> um, in Elkton Hospital, a person named Perez almost died from Agent Orange, and that's with all those safety procedures, when in general, they didn't do any safety procedures. Well, I'll agree with that. And that, that, that's pretty much all I wanted to say, and I'll...
jump off of this thing here because uh, you got some other things to deal with. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye, man. Thank you for calling. Folks, when you call in, I appreciate if you keep it short and, and get to the point and not uh, not try to write a book or tell a long story uh, because we we want to get as many people on here as possible. We want to get everybody a chance to say what they want to say. Good evening. You're on the air. Yeah, Mr. Cooper, the things that you were reading a little while ago also sound a lot like Aleister Crowley. Yes, Aleister Crowley was in the same thing. So is Robert Anton Wilson, the Golden Dawn, uh, the Ordo Templi Orientalis. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so there's a branch of the Ordo Templi Orientalis in National City, California. Yes, there is. Huh? Also, uh, Walt Disney was a 33rd degree Freemason of the uh, Scottish Rite. And, uh, of course, we've talked about his contributions many times. And you wonder how NASA could have been controlled to fake all this kind of stuff? Do you know the man who is the head of the 33rd degree of the Scottish Rite of Freemasonry? His name is Kleindingst. He was the head of NASA. And at one time... Most of the scientists and people involved with the Jet Propulsion Lab used to attend parties at Robert Anton Wilson's home in commemoration of the birth of Aleister Crowley. You guys don't even, don't even have any conception of how wronged you are. You don't have any conception of how far down the primrose path you have been led. You have no conception of the depth of the layers of lies which you are buried under. Good evening. You're on the air. Yes, I wanted to ask you, you were talking about Tom Valentine. I wonder if you could tell me what uh, Mark Lane, the attorney for Spotlight and Liberty Lobby, what is his alias? Do you know... I don't know what his alias is, but I will tell you this. He was... Remember Jim Jones, the Joan Towns Massacre? I know. He was his lawyer. I know. He also was in Dallas, Texas. He was in Dallas, Texas on the day that John F. Kennedy was shot. And he was in Dallas prior to the shooting of John F. Kennedy. And he went by another name... And he was with some liberal organization. Do you know that name? I can't, I can't remember it. Um, and I used to have a report that reported it, and I can't find it now. Well, if you can find it, <laughs> if you can find it, send it to me. Also, Jim Garrison, when he began his investigation and his prosecution of the people that he uh, he indicted for the murder of John F. Kennedy, uh, uh, Mark Lane showed up as a volunteer. And uh, Jim Garrison said that as soon as Lane showed up, his files began to disappear. Mm, isn't that interesting? Oh, yes, it's very interesting. And Lane has written a book on the Kennedy assassination that's full of disinformation and lies. Uh, uh, he is also now uh, the lawyer for the uh, Liberty Lobby, which is, is, a, uh, is a dialectic front organization for those who want to rule the world. Right. Well, if you come across uh, the Mark Lane's other name... I wish you would report it sometime. Well, if I can find it, I will. Okay. Thank you. And if you run across it, you send it to me, and I'll put it right out over the air. Okay. Thanks. You're welcome. Boy, that was a good call. Wasn't uh, <laughs> wasn't counting on anything like that, but, uh, you know, these little gems show up all the time. Good evening. You're on the air. Hello, Bill. Yes. I'm from Tampa, Florida. Uh-huh. And uh, I just recently read that book you recommended, Scarlet and the Beast. Yes. I found that was a really fascinating book. It is when you understand, though, that the, the author also has an agenda. He's shielding the Vatican. He's not talking about the Vatican or international Zionism. He talks only about British and French Freemasonry. Okay. Um, one thing I'm wondering... Um, and and i got to tell you, the, the research that he's done into those two is phenomenal. It's right on the money. Mm -hmm. But you have to understand... International Zionism, Zionism is allied with the British oligarchical uh, Freemasonry, and uh, the Vatican is allied with the socialist Marxist French Freemasonry. Um, one thing I'm interested in finding out is how these people are using uh, evangelical Christianity uh, as part of their Hegelian dialectic. Uh, where could I find out uh, if some of these people are uh, Freemasons? Like I read in that book that... Um, uh, Norman Vincent Peale was a Freemason. 
That's correct. He was. But that was pretty interesting because if you read guideposts, they'll never try and lead you to Christ. That's right. Um, That's right. In fact, very seldom do they ever mention Christ. Yeah. They talk um, about God, but which God are they talking about? Right. It's not, it's not the Christian God, I can guarantee it. Right. Um, do you think they're using this Promise Keepers movement as part of their plan? Well, I'm not sure what you mean by Promise Keepers movement. Um, you know, they've been having these rallies in stadiums across the country. I just said I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. Uh, never Stop telling me where they meet doesn't clarify what you're talking about. I have no idea. I don't, I've never heard that name before. Okay, well, um, Bill Bright of uh, Campus Crusade for Christ and a number of other evangelical leaders, they've been having uh, these Promise Keepers meetings in uh, football stadiums around the country in uh, major cities where they uh, try and get uh, tens of thousands of men to basically uh, dedicate themselves to the Lord. And, uh, Do you know what the Lord means? you know what the literal translation of the Lord is in the ancient languages? No, I don't. Baal. Okay. Baal means the Lord. Mm -hmm. Christians have no idea what they're doing. None whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Christ never talked about the Lord. He knew what it meant. <laughs> okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you for calling. Yeah, you've all been led down the primrose path. I don't like being the one to tell you because the messenger always gets creamed in the process. The messenger is the one you strike out at. Instead of going to look for the truth, you always strike out to kill the messenger. See, I'm, in, I'm between a rock and a hard spot, folks. <laughs> I can't not tell you because then I would violate my purpose. And I don't want to tell you because I know what happens to people who tell you. <laughs> oh boy but my reward will be when I stand face to face with God and God will not be Shirley McLean I can assure you good night folks and God bless each and every single one of you
Their CFR controls the CIA, the FBI, the ATF, and the FDA. They don't give a damn about the POW and the MIA. Hillary, Hillary, Hitler, Marx, and Mao. They want a new world order. They want it all. And they want it now. This Illuminati imports the dope. They create the chaos. Spring is out. Fresh our hope. They created AIDS. It's their designer disease. To bring you down. To grovel on your knees. They want to vaccinate your child and give them the mark. They want to illuminate you and keep you in the dark. They want you to pay for it with plastic surrender. 